This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Meng's Lightning II, Tacom's Typhoon, Italeri's Hunter, an exclusive look at great scale modeling, and AFB Club's FCK1C. New product rundown, proudly brought to you by Hobbyco, distributors of fine model kits from Italeri. Welcome to the new product rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly exploration of the latest kits and accessories. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. We've got an exciting lineup today, starting with Meng's 148 scale F35A. I know what you're thinking. Another F35? Really? Didn't we just look at this? And it's an easy mistake to make given that every manufacturer seems to have released a Lightning II recently. But it is the latest American combat aircraft, and it's entering service with nations around the world. And Meng has earned a reputation for quality. Let's see how its F-35A, the Air Force's conventional takeoff and landing version, stacks up. The fuselage is split into upper and lower halves. Typical of F-35s, no recessed panel lines mark the top. Instead, slightly raised areas delineate the stealthy seals over access hatches. The lower fuselage has similar detail as well as large cutouts for the wheel wells and weapons base. Options and details are the name of the game here. The cockpit features a multi-part ejection seat, a tub with molded switches on the side consoles, separate side control stick and throttle, instrument panel that gets decal screens, and a large shroud. There's plenty more to go inside the fuselage, including full intake ducts that end with the front engine fan. The hot end of the power plant has a jet pipe and a snazzy one-piece nozzle with sharp detail on the pedals inside and out. A photo etch fret provides a rear fan for the pipe as well as a harness for the seat. Structural details and equipment mark the nose gear bay. There's plumbing and wiring molded into the parts for the main wheel wells. All three gear legs comprise several parts including separate actuator struts and oleo scissors. The gear doors have detailed interfaces and optional parts are given to post them closed. The big weapons bays feature molded and added details. The doors can be posed open or closed with separate actuators. If you choose the former, you can arm the Lightning II with short-finned AIM-120C air-to-air missiles and small-diameter GBU-53s. Each bay can hold four of these in a special pylon. The wings have separate flaps and leading-edge slats. The latter appear to be posed slightly down as the locating tabs are molded, but the flaps will probably require modification to reposition. Underwing pylons can be fitted by opening holes in the lower wing halves, but no ordnance or fuel tanks are given to arm these unless you relocate them from the base. I really appreciate the optional parts that allow the elevators to be posed either neutral or 10 degrees up. A nice solution for posing the F-35's unique hinge arrangement. The canopy mounts on a gray plastic frame that can be posed open or closed. The clear parts also provide the targeting pod under the nose and landing and wingtip position lights. Decals provide markings for two U.S. Air Force Lightning IIs one from the 34th Fighter Squadron at Hill Air Force Base, the other from the 33rd Fighter Wing at Eglin. Stencils are included. The proof will be in the building, but there's a lot to like in the box with Meng's F-35. So apparently it's storm season here at MPRD. No sooner have we got through the lightning, than Tacom's Typhoon blows in. Designed and built by CAMAS, this 6x6 Russian Army mine-resistant armor-protected vehicle can carry up to 16 soldiers when used as a troop transport. Other variants in the family perform a variety of roles, including reconnaissance, surveillance, fire support, and medical evacuation. Looking for all the world like a bus, the Typhoon's main body is a long square box. Tacom's hull has crisp frames, bolts, vents, and a few recessed panel lines. The roof hatches and driver's doors are separate. Many of the parts go under the vehicle in the drivetrain and suspension around a pair of frames and fairings. The suspension units feature wishbone arms on a frame, differential with drive axles, brakes, shock absorbers, and steering that should be workable with careful application of heat to mushroom plastic pegs. V-shaped belly panels protect the vehicle, crew, and passengers from explosions. Detailed wheels fit inside sharply molded vinyl tires. A detailed floor fits between the chassis frames to begin assembly of the troop compartment. It includes 14 two-part seats. A detailed wall separates the troops from the engine compartment and the drivers. No engine is provided, but it wouldn't be visible without extra work. It may be possible to pose one or more of the roof hatches open, but it may require modifying the hinges. Each has detail on the inside face. But the rear panel's multi-part ramp can be left movable. The cab doors also may be posable, and there's plenty to see inside. The driver's area comprises a floor, three seats, dashboard, and controls. Small parts like ladders, engine louvers, cabin vents, front plates, lower hull extensions, and more are finely molded and will add a lot of scale finesse to the finished model. 
A sprue of beautifully thin clear parts supplies ballistic glass for the windows and windshields, as well as mirrors and lights. The kit has just three photo etch parts, all for engine vents on the roof. Also minimal here are decals, just four, but painting diagrams show three options, all in overall dark green. This is a beast of a vehicle and it'll look great as a diorama with figures or even just by itself. Next, a quick look at the latest Italy Reebok of Academy's 148th scale Hawker Hunter. I've always liked the Hunter. With its dangerous curves and swept flight surfaces, it looks pretty and deadly. Nearly 2,000 were built and the fighter served with more than 20 air forces. Despite being nearly 20 years old, this remains the best 148th scale Hunter. Fine recessed panel lines provide surface detail on the major airframe parts. Control surfaces, including the flaps and ailerons, are separate, and intake trunks extend to the front engine fan. The canopy and windshield are separate, but the rear frame molded on the sliding section should be removed for accuracy. The biggest concerns with this kit is the shallow cockpit and underscale ejection seat. Replacements are available for both. The highlight of Italeri's kit is the inclusion of a big cartograph decal sheet with markings for five aircraft. Four are colorful aerobatic team birds, two from the Royal Air Force, and one each from Belgium and Switzerland. Personally, I can't get enough hunters, and decals alone make this kit worth a look. You make a great team. It's been that way since the day you met. But your construction dysfunction could be a question of needing a new technique. Fine Scale Modeler for daily use helps you be ready anytime you want to hit the workbench. You can be more confident in your ability to be ready. FSM is approved as the essential tool for scale modelers wanting to build frequently. Tell your customer service rep that you're ready to kick your modeling up a notch. Do take Fine Scale Modeler if you're healthy enough for long hours at the bench. Side effects may include insomnia and bloodshot eyes caused by whiling away hours on a model, backache from bad posture at the bench. To avoid long-term injury, get up and walk around after a building session lasting more than four hours. Ask your customer service rep about Fine Scale Modeler for daily use. So when I meet you guys at contests, club get-togethers, and hobby shops, the number one question I get, besides where's Elizabeth, is when is FSM going to do another great scale modeling? Great news, guys. The answer to the question is now. Thanks to popular demand and after a six-year hiatus, GSM is back and better than ever. Venturing out of the workshop during the last 12 months, our intrepid staff and contributors hit modeling contests like the AMPS International Convention in Danbury, Connecticut, the IPMS USA National Convention in Omaha, Nebraska, and Wonderfest USA in Louisville, Kentucky, as well as several others. We've also showcased a half dozen reader contributed builds. The result is 100 pages of inspirational photos presented as only FSM does. We talk to the builders to get the what, how, and why of their creations. That means hundreds of models to delight your eyes, quench your thirst for knowledge, and inspire your own builds. Great scale modeling, back because you asked for it. Look for it on newsstands everywhere, November 15th. Order your copy today at the Kalmbach Hobby Store. Looking like the offspring of an F-16, an F-18, and possibly a Mirage 2000, our next subject is the Taiwanese designed and built FCK-1C. Developed as an indigenous defense fighter when the Republic of China was having trouble accessing American weapons, the FCK entered service in 1992. A natural fit for Taiwanese scale model company AFV Club, this 148th scale kit represents the single seat 1C with updated avionics, fire control, and radar. Now I dig these exotic, to me at least, fighters. Let's take a look inside. The majority of the fuselage is divided into upper and lower halves molded with the top and bottom wing sections. Fine recessed panel lines and access hatches mark the airframe. The forward fuselage is split along the center line with hornet-like leading edge extensions. The separate flaps and slats appear to be poseable. The same applies to the rudder and elevators. The speed brakes can be shown open or closed. A couple of decals provide screens for the beautifully molded instrument panel, but most of the cockpit detail comprises detail on the side consoles with comprehensive painting instructions. The remaining cockpit parts include a tub, pedals, side stick, and ejection seat. The main fuselage sandwiches detailed landing gear bays with molded structural elements, full intake trunks that are aligned by a center brace, and engines with front and rear fan faces. The intakes themselves are single rings with scale sharp edges. The business ends of the engines are one-piece nozzles with detail inside and out. 
Optional parts mean they can be posed fully open or narrowed. Finely molded landing gear legs have separate struts and actuators and good looking hubs on the wheels. In addition to a pair of 275 gallon fuel tanks, the model can carry a pair each of AIM 9P4 Sidewinders and TC1 Skysword 1 missiles on underwing pylons. Larger TC2 Skysword 2s fill a recess under the center line. Clear plastic provides the one piece canopy, lights, and HUD screens. Optional frames and supports allow the canopy to be posed open or closed. Photo etch metal supplies rear view mirrors and vents. Four marking options are given on the decal sheet and color diagrams. The Taiwanese fighters wear an attractive five color camouflage and mostly low vis insignia. One brighter commemorative bird is provided. The sheet includes myriad stencils for the airframe and weapons and includes remove before flight tags. Not as well known as some other fighters, the FCK would make a great addition to any collection of modern aircraft. And AFE Club's done a first rate job that should make for a detailed replica. There are just too many kits in the world and not enough hours. Look for reviews of the F-35, Typhoon, and FCK in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the November issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We'll see you next time. Wait, sorry. Oh, ow, oh, ow, oh, ow. Oh. Wait, sorry.